Shumi from Overdrive and with me is, as you can see, Mr. Vicky Chando and he's going to talk about Sholavaram uh, to us. So uh, tell uh, our readers, Vicky, what Sholavaram was like and what it was about. Sholavaram, in my, you know, in my personal opinion, and I think the opinion of everybody connected with the fraternity, was like like an event in India. You have a Republic Day event, or you have a you have an uh, Independence Day event, or a Diwali. It was like that on the on the calendar of India, of India. I'm not saying just Madras. The first weekend of February was earmarked for for motor racing. We used to get crowds from Bombay, from Calcutta from Bangalore, Coimbatore and Madras. It was like an annual event that everybody who, who really wanted to see something that they would never see sitting in their drawing rooms and bedrooms, you know, would actually make the effort to come down. It used to be a two-day event spread over a weekend, Saturdays and Sundays. The, the level of entry and the level of enthusiasm, we used to have 70,000 spectators sitting in bamboo-cladded, uh, you know, stands, Toilets used to be a hole in the ground. Uh, nobody minded all that. And uh, tickets used to be black marketed. We had uh, the famous Nichani case where uh, one of the guys in Madras actually was printing tickets and selling them uh, at probably 200 rupees premium for a 200 rupee ticket. And uh, that was the level of enthusiasm. That was the, that was the importance of being at Sholaram. I mean, uh, you know, it's a simple thing. Uh, if you take Sholaram as, as an event uh, from, from the early 60s, I mean, I started racing there in 1972 in an ambassador. But uh, like I was saying, the, the grids, we used to have about 400 to 500 entries in the day. Be it two-wheelers, scooters, uh, saloon cars, single-seater cars, uh, uh, two-seater cars. But it was such a spectacular atmosphere. The Maharaj Kumar of Gondal, Vijay Malia, Karivard and uh, David Pieris... Uh, uh, Ajit Thomas, uh, you know, we had this whole lot from the old, uh, early days, and uh, and you had quite a combination of cars in this whole mix and bikes in this whole mix too. Didn't you know, you? the the nice thing was we, it used to be called Formula Libra. So Formula Libra meant that there was a CC restriction. The CC limit used to be two liter, which was fantastic, or it used to be open. And then uh, I think it was uh, my good old friend Nazir Hussain who decided to uh, one day that he should bring it down to sixteen hundred CC. For, for reasons that, in my opinion, were fairly stupid if you look at it uh, today, <laughs> because the bigger cars attracted the crowds, okay? Right. Why did people come thronging to Sholara? Because they could see huge power, huge cars. So I raced a Formula 2, and uh, which was a Chevron B42, an ex-Elio De Angelis ICI-sponsored car with a, with a hot 2-liter uh, engine. Uh, Vijay entered in 83, or 84, with an ensign, uh, a Formula One car, where I'll never forget that the first time he drove it on the track, the track was so bumpy that we had his head going like, wah, 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 and he just, <laughs> just couldn't put the power down. Then uh, we had uh, Ganu, I mean the late Maharaj Kumar of Gondal, in a Formula 5000. He switched from his uh, hybrid Jaguar Special to a proper racing car. David Pierre is from Sri Lanka. Uh, Curry had his Datsun Special. The whole variety of cars, I mean, from a Formula One to, to a two-liter home-built car, uh, was unbelievable. And going down that straight, believe you me, today, if you think about it, we had a dip on the main straight, just past the start-finish line, where once you got over the crest and hit that, your back took such a pounding. I mean, today I know why we've got weak backs, because none of us really thought about it. But you're sitting half an inch off the ground, and you get knocked, your bottom gets knocked on the surface, and we were doing 300 kilometers plus. Uh, you know, it was over 200 miles an hour down the street. So about 320 kilometers an hour down the street. And I'm talking about the 80s. I'm not talking about today. <laughs> I'm talking about the 80s. It was uh, a T-shaped track. Basically, we had the start finish. You go down. A right-hander U-bend, which used to be a first gear corner. Second gear, third gear, up to a left-hander chicane. A quick blip into second, down into third again, heading towards the U-bend, third, fourth, really hard on the brakes, and then down the box into first gear again. So it was uh, basically, you make a U, get up there, then take a left turn, get up there, another U-bend. This left and the following left running downhill used to be like chicanes. Then we come sweeping down this left-hander, the second left-hander, which used to become... Third, switching to fourth gear, 
getting up to about 120, 130 miles an hour with only hay bales in between two Little directional traffic. The track, right. Then get down to the far end. Uh, my car had a six-speed gearbox, so we would actually be getting up to about 200 miles an hour uh, before we were really hard on the brakes. It was it was great fun. It was a good laugh, and uh, it was damn serious racing. We used to race for 50 laps. I mean, today when when I when I see people complaining after six laps and a 10 lap race at Sri Perum, they say, "Oh, it was really tiring. It was really hot." I mean, February in Madras. Madras is always hot, so and doing 50 laps in a in a car right on on concrete wasn't the easiest of things. But for a fact, I think the the crowds really encourage us on. I mean, to have 70,000 people sitting around watching and clapping, and uh, uh, I think the whole atmosphere was just was just mind blowing. And luck, okay, it was only once a year, so so it was it was nice to do. The race committee used to meet every single day for a month before the races to just chalk each and everything out right. and uh, you know unbelievable I, I really miss the Shoraram days I think uh, while this circuit as Sri Perambitur is a proper driver circuit purpose built and things like that it's uh, it's certainly uh, uh, you don't see the speeds like you do at Shoraram days and you don't see the big cars anymore you do see a proper format of racing I agree uh, the, the, the racing is more disciplined uh, in the current days at least people can make careers out of it all of us were hobby racers so it, it was fine to do all this but uh, today I think from the days of hobby racing to become professional would have been difficult I mean I spent uh, three weeks at Brands Hatch in 1981 before uh, the 1982 uh, before I got the first Formula Ford down to race and um, I I uh, raced Formula Fords there for two weeks training. I didn't have any money. I had enough money to last me three days. After the third day, uh, I took a job at Brands Hatch, cleaning and servicing the cars, starting them every morning to bring them out to the students who were going to come and uh, race the day. And that's how I got my free laps in. I mean, with 25 cars needing to be warmed up, getting ready for the day. So then I did the motorcycles, I did the Hondas, I did the go-karts. So I spent three and a half, four weeks of, uh, you know, formal training. But uh, I don't think many of us ever, you know, got beyond uh, uh, beyond that. That was the most formal thing that anyone in in India did at those times. And I was lucky to have spent three and a half, four weeks. I mean, was willing to work for it. Uh, uh, I I don't mind dirting my fingernails. And, you know, it was was a good experience. And, uh, yeah... Uh, Sholarum will always remain uh, special to to many of us, and uh, certainly, I think as the as the old saying goes, I mean, you've you've got to start moving forward, and uh, there is a price that you pay for moving forward, and I think we have lost the spectators, we have lost the uh, <coughs> so-called uh, festivity atmosphere. Uh, but so, so, so do you think an annual gala at Sri Parambudur and you know the same kind of hobby racing where you know there's a class, a, a free class where you can get whatever you want to race would be? I think so. I think also <laughs> perhaps it's not uh, it's not too much to ask that if we get the big saloons today, you know the, the really big cars, the Lambos, the Ferraris, the Aston Martins, maybe that'll help. But that's again going up one one notch. But. Mm. Uh, I also don't think that just a Formula 3 race or something like that will make the viewership any better. Okay, okay? Uh, It needs something big, it needs something spectacular. We need, we need to get some Formula Libras, we need to get some... You know, you, it, it should be not, let's say, not hardcore racing. Okay, It needs to be entertainment coupled with racing. For the hardcore racing or the professional racing guys, you've got the classes that exist. Right. Okay, the, the, the Formula Swift is great, the Formula Maruti is great, the Formula Roll-On, the Formula MRF 1600. I mean, the, the, the JK Junior Cup, the, the, the JK Rotax karting, all this provides the professional approach. Right. Okay, so while that can serve the professional approach, I mean, we need something for the entertainment and the masses. The hobby racer is... The hobby racer is, is certainly the solution. Yes. And uh, in my opinion, I think to have the hobby racers uh, is important. Is important to keep the focus, uh, you know, of entertainment and, you know, a, a more relaxed atmosphere. We certainly need that. Okay. And uh, I think that's what I miss most uh, between Shoraram and uh, Sri Parambadur. Right. Thank you so much, Vicky. That was amazing. And I'm just going to pick up the cameras. It will shake and show you this conference room in Vicky's office. And just look at these trophies. 
and these are not current trophies these are the keys on trophies uh, recently refurbished and handed over to him by his father who said uh, it's time to put these all of these up so that's like the full bits of it and just to show you what's going on look like and there's a photograph on the wall as you can see i'm passing a lot of photographs of racing cars but here's the interesting one no not the kingfisher calendar this one here uh, vicky uh, will you explain the yeah. cars again well pole position pole position was on the inside so that's that's me in that uh, chevron b42 that was pole position because it was a right hand u bend there right that's uh, vijay in the uh, n sign right dp special maharaj kumar of gondal in the formula 5000 right david pierres in a car called the art pico special made in sri lanka okay then you see lurking there in row 2 right. curry in the dats in uh, number 65 right and then we had a whole bunch of uh, Seven or eight Formula Four two thousands making up the grid. So you know that was the atmosphere. And just just take a look at the stands. I mean, they're jam packed. There was right. not a single empty seat. And these were the uh, these were the stands everywhere around the circuit. Right. Seventy thousand people were probably another twenty thousand were gotten with the black market tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's where we were. Nice. and uh, this this uh, video is related to the story we are doing for the anniversary issue the by the time you see this it should be out so if you want to read about shri parabudur use the article and this is uh, part of my research for the article as you can see this is going to be a very interesting story this is shumi signing out